Who is the best female character on screen inside a male environment? Who is it? Put your answers down below and let's see. Hi everyone. Okay, what makes the perfect female character? I'm going to let you know in this. But do how many do we have? How many do you have? And I'm talking about a female character in an action film or some sort of inside the male environment. So do we have any? How do we make them? Are they any good? So let's have a look at that. But the one I'm going to talk to you today about is Mariko Dono, who is from The Shogun, the series that has took the world by storm and everybody loves it. And today I just received in the post from Frederick Kynes uh, his, ver his book In the Service of the Shogun. So get that and let me know what you think about this copy down below okay very quickly let's have a look at some female characters we've got linda hamilton as um sarah connor in the terminator series we've got vasquez from the aliens with sigourney weaver so you get sigourney weaver who plays ripley and she's in the aliens and you also get vasquez from there who is amazing and then you get princess leia from Star Wars, and Red Sonja. Red Sonja is a great character. Um, my favourite, but it's in comic book, is Durham Red. Durham Red is amazing. So why are these why are these women great when we get characters like Rey from Star Wars? Where everybody's like, mm, it's a bit naff, isn't it? And all the other multitude of, I can't even remember their names, non-memorable female characters in thingy. I don't know. Right, my name's Anthony Cummins, and I'm going to go through these with you, but could you get a copy of Samurai Death Cult? This is my new book out, get a copy of it, I'll leave some links below, or if not, Book of Bushido is now on Audible. Right, so let's look at Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor, terrified, she's absolutely terrified, there's a big machine man coming for her, there's a, um, a man from the future who's really aggressive towards her, but he's there to help her, but he's so pent up, he's aggressive, she lives in eight, the 1980s sort of New York world where it's a dangerous place, she's like, you know, out on her own. Yet she turns into the most formidable female character you've ever seen. And you know what? Everyone's rooting for it. Even more than Arnie, you're like, go on, Connor. Go on, sort it out, love. And and you're with it. You, the actress is ripped. She's good. And why why do we appreciate that? But the modern female characters, we don't. Then, of course, you've got Vasquez from the same thing. Uh, sorry, from Aliens. I've uh, put the two here, is Ripley and Vasquez. And the reason is, is Ripley is different to Vasquez, and they're both excellent. Ripley is the Sarah Connor mould. She's a female in a male world, and she has to toughen up and get there fast and compete with the males, and she does it. Whereas Vasquez is literally like, I was born, I'm going to be in, a, uh, in the army, I'm going to be a space marine, and I'm going to be... And everybody noticed that they called space marines, and then space marines came out really not long after. Um, but they never talk about who's got copyright for them. Um, right, so basically... Uh, and same as and terminators right after terminator hmm. so basically you've got two females there one who's born and they're just hard and they want to go and they train and train and train and they have to compete in a male world and then you get one who's not they're not into that at all but society or fate puts them there and they have to compete in a male world and they both of them are not harder than men very much they really really have to compete to be as as tough as the men just to get there and that gives us men gives us respect for them to say yep i would struggle in that situation love so you've done a right good job in that situation but i saw your progress of getting there or at least the story implies there is a progress of getting there you're not just born and that's it now of course you've got princess leia who's a little bit different she starts as the she's never starts as the damsel in distress at all um she's actually quite aggressive towards her Grand Moff Tarkin, and you're like, okay, okay, you know, she's going for it, but she's a, she's, she's female, she's not, she's not got any powers, she's in a male world, she can get killed in laser guns, she can be done. So basically, what we have is um, her then becoming better and better throughout her career inside of the films to the point where she had strangles Jabba the Hutt with a chain, and nobody bats an eyelid, nobody says, oh, you know what, here we go. Red Sonja has to make her way into, you know, in, throughout the world in a male, very male Conan world and does it well. Uh, no problems there because, you know, she has to try to defeat people more powerful than her. This is a, a key to female characters is male characters can't just defeat the enemies. Even Arnie and he's like, you know, he's there. There's a serious threat to him. And the only time the character will actually really shine is when the villain is harder than them. If the villain is harder, the character shines, or it's a real competition between two 
people. So inside of that, the male male leads as well need to show progression. Luke Skywalker shows progression. Um, Arnie in Predator, he's already fully trained. You know, he's been through all the military he's gone through. But there he's like, he's up against the Predator. And something has to change and, and change and adapt. And you see him adapting and learning. You're with him on that journey of learning. So why is it? They don't do that for female characters anymore. They used to do it because the male characters were needed and the female characters both needed a good adversary and then a progressive path to go down so that by the end of the film or the story, you were like, go on, yes, go on. It don't matter if they're male or female. Plenty of lads, and they've got to be a bit beautiful. Let's be honest. They've got to be good-looking people in Hollywood. If you just pick Mingus, nobody goes for it. Don't know why they've stopped picking really beautiful people in Hollywood anymore, but that was why you went to the cinema to see beautiful people doing things you couldn't do and get your heart behind their characters. So let's get back to Mariko Dono, right? Okay, in the Shogun. So why is she mint? Right. First of all, when we watched the trailers for this, for Shogun, we thought, you know what? This looks a bit silly. It's 2024. We know full well you've got all these female Mary Sues, as they call them. Mary Sue is a female who can just do anything because she's amazing and beats all males. And they just tell people males are crap. So, you know, females are great, males are crap. And we're all very bored of that. But so when we first saw this trailer, it was like, mm, she's fighting off loads of people. But oh God, were we wrong? We were wrong. She is an almost, if not a perfect character. So she's female in a very male orientated world, yeah? She's flawed, which she's also got a backstory and she wants to die. She's a backstory. She's from a shamed family and she wants to die, but she's been kept alive and she's not allowed to commit suicide and she's got to be kept alive. And, you know, that that's her trauma in there. And you think, oh, they're doing it out of kindness. No, they're not. They've got a plan for later on for her death to mean something. So not only is she a beautiful, she is a beautiful lady and she's there, she's in a male environment and she's struggling, so you automatically feel for her because she's not suddenly like, ha I can defeat you, you men are crap. She's like, oh no, I live in this world and some men are great and some men are bad. You know, what can we do about, you know, what can I do? So already we're hooked on this character and we're invested whether she needs to die or whether she needs to live and why she's not allowed to die, why she can't she live? So then we start seeing, oh, she's a martial arts master. But you see, she's trained since childhood in a way which is plausible and it's plausible that she you know could have trained this way okay so she's samurai she's trained but you know in the trailers she's as good as the men and then beats them off all the way so you follow her but you don't see this you're like in the trailer she's fighting loads but you really don't see it. you get a little glimpse of her martial arts as you see the flashbacks of her training and then she, i think she has a little bit of a to do with someone and she, you can see she's quite good but you're like, mm, where's this going to go? But then the most amazing scene happens. She is told she has to go to Osaka and she has to go in there and then get back out. That's all she's got to do. And if she can get back out and they try to stop her, then basically it will show that everyone else is hostage and they too. And it will start a revolt inside the castle, which is perfect Japanese espionage. It's brilliant. So... She's there and she's going to come out of that thing yet. And she's the most... Now, now, no male thinks that women have less determination than them. I don't know any men who think, you know what? Women are just weak in the sense that they have no determination. They don't. We know women are physically weaker than us, but sometimes they've got way more determination. Sometimes they're like way more like they'll go and do something more than us. So we don't... Men don't go, you know what? They couldn't do that. They're automatically... We're involved. Yes. Okay. So we know she's determined to die, which, you know, she will commit suicide. She's like, I'm ready. Commit suicide. Let's go. And you're automatically like, bloody hell, I couldn't do that. You know, and then it's like, I'm going to go in and I'm going to come out. And everybody else, all the samurai are saying, we're being kept here against our will. You know, are we hostages? Are we free to go? And she's the one who stands up and goes, no, I'm going. And you can kill me if you like. And you're all like, whoa, go for it, love. Go on, go on. And then basically, so we're all like, oh, is she going to kill the next thing? You know, she sends her male escort, escort forward and they get brutally murdered. And you're like, whoa. And then you think, oh, there we go. It's 2024. She's going to get out the, the, the Naginata and start killing everyone because, you know, armoured soldiers. Oh, here we go. But no, arrows start coming down. Nobody wants to kill her because she's an aristocratic, you know, high-born woman. Well, 
not technically, but you know what I mean. She's she is basically of higher samurai blue blood. But I think at this time we're on the upside down world where the lower samurai were taking over the higher samurai, and the aristocratic samurai were actually lower than the low samurai. But anyway, that's a totally different thing. So basically, she's nobles. She's up there. She's well regarded, and they don't want to kill her because it'll be an outright, you know. So they're firing arrows right at her feet, and she just carries on walking. And you're on you're on the edge of your seat going. God, what are they going to do? So then they send forward the um, the spearmen, and you think, oh, here we go. She's going to suddenly beat them all. Nope. That trailer tricked us, well tricked us, and it's a case of, no, they given the order, hold her back, but don't kill her. So you've got like five, six, seven, eight, nine men around her, and she is fighting really well, except they are not trying to kill her, they're just trying to pin her and hold her. So she's trying to kill them, but they are trying to stop her, which makes brilliant. There's no way she could kill nine men in a go. They'd kill her instantly. There's no problem with that. But that gives us a perfect reason for her to have a flashy fight with the men and not, you know, and, and not make the audience, especially the males, go, OK, here we go. So it was so well done. And then, spoiler alert, she dies. So after this, when they're being attacked by the Shinobi no Mono, the ninja, that she literally... That the, one of the males fails in, in being brave, which is no problem. I think it would have been better if he failed to do it in time and, and she, because it sort of ruined his character a bit. But basically, she's, 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 she's used to death and the idea of death, and she, she steps in the way of an exploding bomb and basically is killed, and that's fine. So, from the beginning, she's a character that is. So, from the beginning, she's clearly in a man's world. The men are well harder than her. But you know, as you go along, she's been trained. She's got some training. You think, okay, this is nice. All right, she's trained. And then you think, sure, she's got a death wish, but she's not allowed to die. But then they turn the table and you say, well, she's actually sent to die and test the other men. And then she becomes stronger than the men mentally. And then other men are told to hold her back, but she can hold her own against them. But she isn't enough to kill them. And then she sacrifices herself to save other people. Okay, perfect female character. She goes up there with Ripley from Aliens, Vasquez from Aliens, uh, Sarah Connor um, from um, Terminator, and um, basically the others I've just mentioned before. That goes up there with the best of them. So well done. Now, I assume that was written that way in the book, so we have to congratulate the author of the book, so well done. But if not, well done to the script writers for Shogun and the historical advisor, which is Frederick Kynes. And um, just what a great addition to cinema and TV and everything in a time when we're on the edge of it being just trash and ruined. So anyway, my name's Anthony Cummins. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you very, very much. I'm sweating cobs because it is hot. It is hot today. Get yourself a copy of this in the service of the Shogun if you want to support uh, the Frederick who's behind Shogun or if you want to support me you get a copy of uh, Samurai Death Cult How to Be a Modern Samurai or The Book of Bushido any of them will help that always gets us money back to this channel so thank you very much thank you for watching this video my name is Anthony Cummins if you want to follow me online you can follow me on YouTube on Samurai and Ninja History with Anthony Cummins where I'll deal with all the history of the Samurai and the Ninja you can follow me on Samurai Martial Arts Real Training. This is where you'll get only the physical. You'll get only the martial arts. You can follow me on Natori Ryu, where I teach and show all the different strategies and warfare related to the Natori family. Now, outside of this, I also do some other things. So you can join me on Western Culture and Tradition, where I look at the little bits of information from the West, our folklores, our customs. You can also join me on War Duke. This is purely a fantasy channel, a little bit of fun for me in my spare time. If you're on Instagram, you can follow me again on Samurai and Ninja History. This is my basic account. And again, getting back to the fantasy, you can follow me on the Dungeon Crawl, where I'll go through everything that's eerie, dungeon synth and all of those fantasy elements. And finally, I put some of my art on all Space Marine chapters. I do this just so I can do a little bit of art and keep up to date with the artistic world and keep my skills alive. I hope to see you there guys and I look forward to all of the comments on my posts and videos.